Right then, this one should be an interesting one for you. Um, got a Ducati 1098 with a starter clutch problem. Um, what I'm going to do in this video, I'll explain to you uh, the sort of theory of operation of the starter clutch with the new parts on the bench in a second. I'll get the bike stripped and I'll show you how to do the repair. Um, so, <clears throat> in essence, what's happening? Um, these 1098s do this weird like auto start thing, so you push the starter and it cranks on its own till it fires up. Well, what's happening is if you listen carefully, you can hear the starter motor, rather than the engine sort of turning over and you can hear the compression, um, between, between sort of um, compression strokes you can hear the starter motor freewheeling, so if you have a listen... You know that sort of whizzing sort of sound, that's basically the um, starter motor freewheeling. Um, I'll just get the new bits on the bench and I'll explain to you what's going on with it. Okay, so these are the, the three sort of main components of the um, starter clutch. I should probably <clears throat> also say, I say starter clutch, um, lots of sort of different terminology. The, the most common probably is a sprag clutch. Um, and the other term, the other term I like is a tapered roller clutch because it sort of describes it quite well. Um, so this is the actual clutch piece, and basically this consists of a sort of metal framework, and then inside the centre, if we can see, I'm not sure where we're focused there. There are these rollers, and those rollers have little ramps. So there's little, uh, see the little humps in the little piece it pushes against, um, and then there's this wire spring that sort of I'll get it to focus, um, keeps them all squashed in. Um, this is the driven gear, so this gear um, is driven by the starter motor, so the electric motor, um, the teeth of the electric motor rotate this, so when you push your start button, starter motor gets energised and this is rotated. I'll show you this when the bike's apart, it'll be more obvious. So the idea of this clutch, um, if I can put it together whilst holding the camera, wrong way round, that piece drops onto there like this, this is how it's together on the bike and then this piece is bolted to the flywheel of the bike so effectively to the end of the crankshaft so this is physically connected to the crankshaft um, and then this drops over here if it'll go together he says, my dodgy filming, sorry guys okay so what happens as the starter motor rotates this gear um, it obviously, well, which way is it going to rotate it? It's going to rotate it, it's going to rotate it that way. So as the starter motor rotates the gear this way, um, it drives, this is all locked together in that rotation, so it drives this outer boss, and as the engine fires, and this starts to spin quicker, if you see it can freewheel this way, but it locks that way, so it'll easily turn this way, and bear in mind that this is all full of oil inside the engine as well, so it's well lubricated. So, starter motor engages, starts to turn the crankshaft. Imagine this is the crank on the outside, because this is connected to the crank. Starter motor rotates this. This is the crankshaft rotating. As soon as the engine fires, it's free to fire and run on its own. And then you take your finger off the start button. Um, and this gear is then stationary when the engine's running. The, the pinion of the starter is constantly connected to this, to this gear. And then as the engine's running, this just free wheels, and it's well lubricated. Um, <clears throat> that's in essence how it works. The sort of main difference with bikes compared to cars, um, same bikes, BMW bikes are probably the exception because they have a car type starter motor, but the normal way you would do it with a car is you'd have, think of a ring gear, which is effectively like this gear, but bigger on the flywheel of your engine. And then with a the car, the gear on the starter motor isn't actually connected to um, the ring gear. So when you engage the starter on a car, the gear flies out, engages the ring gear, turns the engine for it to start, and then as soon as the engine starts, the gear disengages itself. But with a bike, the starter motor is constantly connected to this gear. But this gear doesn't ro rotate when the engine's running. As I said, it's turned by the starter motor till the engine fires, and then the engine, once the engine's running, this just spins and the gear and the, obviously the pinion of the starter um, stay stationary. So what's happening with that funny noise you can hear when the bike's cranking is the the clutch is freewheeling the wrong way so it's it's spinning obviously it's allowed to spin that way so the engine can run 
Um, but as it's cranking it, um, and, and driving the driving the, it's hard to do it with one hand. But as it's driving the engine around this way, um, it's allowing it to slip. So you get that sort of free wheel effect in both directions, and that's what's causing the starting issue. Um, sorry, waffling a little bit there, but hopefully that that makes some sense. And when we actually get the uh, bike apart. Um, and you see it all in position, it'll probably make a little bit more sense. Right, so to take the bike apart now. Okay, so first thing is I've got to pop the fairing off. There's only actually a couple of um, screws holding it on because I've had the, had the panel off already while I was just looking at what was involved. Um, we'll get the fairing panel off and we'll um, assess how much of a job this is going to be. I actually, I know how much of a job it's going to be. I've done a few of them, but I will uh, share it with you. Okay, so we're into the guts of it now. Um, <clears throat> Quite a bit that's got to be removed to get to this clutch. The clutch is basically behind this uh, engine cover here. This shape you can see in the side of the cover is uh, the flywheel, which is the, the piece that the clutch is bolted to. Water pump, battery, all this hose, um, all these hose assemblies, it's all got to sort of be removed. Not really doing a how-to, just wanted to show you um, what a starter clutch did and what was involved in changing one so I'm going to remove now I'm going to drain the water there's a coolant drain plug here I'm going to drain the water out of it take the battery off move all these pipes out of the way and just get to a point where I can get to the ring of bolts that hold that's holding this um, cover on and uh, and then I'll come back to you because there's a little tool for pulling the cover off which I'll show you um, not highly exciting but probably worth showing okay catch you in a minute <laughs> Okie dokie, <clears throat> right, so I've now got all the water pipes disconnected, got, obviously got the water drained out as you've just seen, I've um, got the water pipe, a couple of pipes are off completely, and then I've got a couple of pipes that are just loose, um, battery's not there anymore, this is loose, give myself a little bit of wiggle room, um, thing to do now is I've got this ring of bolts around this cover, so I'm going to remove all those and pop the cover off so we can reveal the starter clutch and the flywheel. Okay, so I've got the um, I've got this ring of bolts all the way around the cover removed now. Um, so it should be pretty much ready to come off. Um, probably a little side note too is I've I've drained the oil um, because the oil level is somewhere sort of around the bottom of this casing. If you look at the sight glass on the on the clutch cover on the other side, it's at the oil level, the bike is upright, the oil level's obviously higher than this cover, so just to pull the cover off, we'd end up with a huge mess on the bench. Um, what I have done, actually, I've, this bike only had an oil change about 100 miles ago, um, so I've just drained it into a clean container. 99% of the time, I would say, just treat it to oil and filter when you're doing this kind of thing, there's, there's no point in being a cheapskate. Um, but given that it's £65 worth of fully synthetic oil in there and it's only done 100 miles, I'm I'm going to save it to save the customer a little bit of money. Um, I was talking about a funky tool to get this cover off. Excuse my bad filmage. Um, so all these bolts are removed. This cover um, is actually, it doesn't have a gasket. It just It's aluminium to aluminium and they use gasket sealer called 3 Bond, which I'll show you as it goes together. It's a grey silicon sealer um, that they use in the factory um, instead of a gasket it's a special kind of um, silicon designed for engine building that if you have any left on the you know on the inside of the cover not that you should have much you can actually see a little bit of it here from originally when it went together it stays really rubbery so it doesn't drop off inside the engine when it when it dries but anyway that's that's by the by so this um, if I can do it one handed this little tool um, screws into where the little cover was going to go like that <clears throat> doesn't need to be hugely tight and then the idea is you use this allen bolt which you screw in which pushes on the end of the crank and it pops the cover off nice and squarely because there's a couple of dowels that locate the cover um, you can do it without it you can hit it with a big rubber hammer or, or get behind it with a bit of wood or something it's just not worth the hassle these tools I've got three or four of these kicking around the workshop they're 
like no money, you know, like ten pounds or something for one of these. Um, have a look on eBay. I'm sure you'll find something. Uh, anyway, so I'll pull the cover now. I'll tighten this Allen bolt up, which will pop the cover off. Get the cover out of the way. The only wiring, incidentally, for the cover was this um, connection block with these three yellow wires. Um, AC generator in there, obviously. Uh, and those are the only wires going to this cover, so that's disconnected. So I should be able to pull this cover and physically get it out of the way. Um, so I'll pull the cover off now and I'll show you what's uh, what's going on inside. Just share this little bit with you. I've just, um, you can see as I, as I rotate this Allen key, you can see it's pulled the pulled the casing and it's it's basically pulled it off pulled it off squarely. They can sometimes if you're trying to you know get a screwdriver behind somewhere or bash it with a rubber hammer or pull it off. They can sometimes go crooked on the dowels and they get quite stiff to come off. But with this tool, it just makes it really easy. Pulls it off nice and square. Okay, I'll remove the cover and show you now. Right then, so there we have it. <clears throat> That's what it looks like inside. Got the cover off here. Um, see the end of the puller there to pull the cover off um, it's worth noting actually um, if you are doing one yourself even though this puller breaks the seal of the gasket you've got to get your fingers behind it and uh, give it a real good tug because the, the magnets in this flywheel are really really strong and they really want to hold on to this generator so you've got to pull against the magnetic field it feels like it isn't, doesn't really want to come off but once you get past the point it will actually pop off um, so the next thing to do is you've got to get the flywheel off um, because the clutch is actually on the back here. This gear you can see here is the large gear that we had on the bench earlier on. And then you can see under here, um, that's the pinion from the starter motor um, that's coming through from the other other side of the from the casing. And then there's a reduction gear in the middle here. Um, and this part of the reduction gear is the gear that's driving the large one that we saw on the bench, if that makes sense. So the next thing is get the flywheel off and then we can actually physically get to the clutch to change it. The, um, the observant amongst you will realise that I hadn't moved my nice tub of clean oil from underneath it before I used my um, air gun on the flywheel nut so now it looks like it is having new oil because I've um, got bits of something floating in it. Bugger. Okay so there it is without the flywheel. Um, so flywheel just literally slides off. If you're doing one yourself, just be aware there's um, some stuff going on here. Basically, pay attention. There's there's a shim. Um, I'll, I'll pull it apart on the bench and lay it out and show you. But there's a few components there that have obviously got to go back in a very specific order. Um, so we can see there. Um, is it bright enough? I'm not quite sure. Let me get out the light a little bit. Um, so that's the. You can see the one-way clutch. So it it turns. If you can see the flywheel underneath, how can I shoot this? So you can see as I turn, drive it that way, it turns the flywheel. So imagine the starter motor is turning this gear. It's cranking the engine. As soon as the engine fires and starts rotating in that direction, then this is free to freewheel. Um, obviously it's driving it now with my hand because I'm not really applying any force in terms of the amount of force it would be under um, when it's trying to crank the engine over um, <clears throat> what happens is I might as well just take it apart down here rather than putting it on the bench so if we let's get rid of that shim so this just lifts out he says so what happens is and I don't know whether we can see on this one but this this gear wears you get little uh, little grooves in the in the gear so that piece almost certainly needs to be replaced uh, let's get it in the daylight see if it'll focus a bit Actually, yeah, you can see the wear marks where the clutch has been running. So that needs that needs to be new. Um, then you've got the clutch assembly. So you see there's these. Whoop, get it, get it in shot, Jim. Focus. So uh, that's the other piece. There's a needle roller, um, 
and a boss for the needle roller that that fits in. It's all fairly self-explanatory. You just got to pay attention as it's as it's coming apart. And then you've got your clutch in here, which is held in with this boss, um, which is the other two parts that I showed you um, when we had it, the new new bits on the bench. So I'll take this apart now, and we can have a better look at this starter clutch and see exactly what's going on with it. Before I um, pull that. Uh clutch out of the flywheel let me just give you a little bit of a better look of what's going in here going on in here um, this is obviously the end of the crankshaft well not obviously but this is the crankshaft so we've got con rods and pistons and stuff going on here this this here is a balance shaft um, which is timed so if ever you remove this gear you've got to pay attention to lining marks up and stuff but I'm not going to get into that and then down here you can see that's the pinion of the um, starter motor, the starter motor is underneath here um, so that's the pinion which drives this this reduction gear here um, so it drives onto pinion onto here and then this gear here is the gear that drives so if I just rest this back on here whoops, there goes the shim uh, so it fits on there like that so the starter motor is basically driving this centre bit of the on the on the sprag clutch, on the starter clutch Sort of makes sense, I suppose, looking at it like that, doesn't it? Anyway, that's what's going on there. Um, let's get this uh, starter sprag tapered roller clutch out of the flywheel and uh, inspect it. Sorry, uh, another little side note too. I will actually get to take this clutch out in a second. I just wanted to, if you're doing one yourself, um, it's handy to know that you don't need a flywheel puller with these. Um, most bikes, the, um, the flywheel is on a taper on the crankshaft, but on these it isn't it's just straight onto that spline shaft so it literally you undo that big nut that we undid with the air gun and it basically just slides off the off the end of the crank so no flywheel puller is required which is quite good okay so um, <clears throat> getting this starter clutch out we've taken the um, bolts uh, T25 torque socket um, take the bolts out from the center of this um, flywheel and then this basically the, the magnetic -y bit um, the magnetic bit separates from the from the other piece and then there's almost a top tip coming on here um, if you flip it over to get this boss out which is basically let's get this apart uh, he says so that boss in there is basically this piece a bit tricky to get out and it looks different too. I think it must be modified, which is definitely the right one. It's the right part number. I think they must have modded it slightly. Um, anyway, that's beside the point. To get this boss out, um, it can be quite tight in the flywheel. So, what you can do is if you get a drift, um, and let's get the right angle. So, if you get a drift, this is an Allen key T bar, not a drift, obviously, and rest it in one of these holes that doesn't have a thread in and just knock it round, it'll rotate, even though it's quite tight to pull out, you can get it to rotate, knock it around a bit, just, you know, three or four degrees, not far, um, which then puts the holes with the thread out of line slightly, does that make sense? So then what you can do is you can screw a six mil bolt in, God, my filming is bad, sorry boys, girls, whoever's watching, and um, then you can th screw a six mil um, bolt in, and it'll draw out the um, the boss nice and straight, if that makes sense. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna struggle a little bit to get this out. Anyway, I'll get it all apart and we'll have a proper look at it. Okay, then. So this is it all in bits. Um, this is the boss that I've just pulled out with those uh, screws I was telling you about. Um, worth a note, probably. Um, the boss, as you know, I've got a new one here. Um, so I've got three parts. I've got the gear. Um, the boss and the actual clutch itself these hardly ever need to be replaced um, I've got a new one um, because very occasionally I've seen them crack uh, which obviously causes problems they tend to not wear out um, you can see some marks in this one but they're literally just sort of polish marks where the um, where the outside edge of this um, clutch has been rubbing so I think I'm probably going to uh, going to use the original one, save the guy a few quid because um, that's 80 something pound plus fat um, so I'll, I'll save him that money and, and use the original because I'm pretty confident it's going to work just the same um, so the $64,000 question is, so how do these clutches fail and why do they fail and what's going on? well, 
if I can get this in the light, I will show you. So these rollers, now I did explain earlier on basically how they work. These rollers are in little ramps. If you can see, there's a little ramp um, for each roller. Uh, so what happens is, get it in focus, so you see you can push the roller up with my finger. This boss down here is what's supporting the outside edge of the roller. That's basically a, a, a solid surface for this to push against this ramp. So whoop, let's get it in focus. So this ramp um, is pushing against the outside edge of that boss. And what happens is, as the centerpiece tries to rotate inside these rollers, when it rotates one way, it's pushed to the the sort of high side of the into the heel of the ramp and allows the centerpiece to rotate. When it tries to rotate the other way, the roller rolls down its ramp, so sort of in that direction, and uh, and jams up basically. Um, that's why they're called tapered rollers because there's basically a taper inside there once it's all together. So the roller then jams into the taper. Um, so why do they fail? Well, what happens is, and we're talking a small amount of wear here, but on these rollers, and I'm not sure it's going to come out that well on the camera, but on these rollers, you get little flats that wear. I'm not sure it's picking it up that well. But you get wear on the rollers. Maybe you can see it here on a couple of these. And we're, we're talking, you know, a thou, maybe thou and a half, two thou of wear on these rollers is enough to cause it to not grip. Um, and then that combined with, where are we? Sorry, we need to point the camera where I'm actually looking. Um, and then that combined with the wear on this gear as well um, is enough to cause it to start to slip. Uh, it's actually quite bad, this gear. They're not normally that bad. You can sometimes get away with just replacing the um, the actual tapered roller part of the clutch. Focus again. So that's basically why they fail. Um, so now, reassembly is basically the reverse of taking it apart. Uh, basically now I've got half an hour of cleaning. I'm going to literally clean everything to within an inch of its life. Cannot emphasise enough how important everything being clean is. So all the old gasket goo off the old cases, um, all these parts washed with brake cleaner and dried, so they're all ready to be reassembled. Um, that's pretty much it, I think. I'll um, I'll give you some little snapshots of it going back together, um, and then it running at the end, possibly. But that is what is going on with your starter clutch, if you have one that's failing. Okay, so we're making progress. Um, <clears throat> most of it's cleaned off now. I've got the new clutch fitted, um, nuts done up tight with a little bit of thread lock on it, um, I've started cleaning off the gas old gasket goo, not quite finished yet but I've got the worst of it off, Just, just oh, I can't speak, I just I thought I'd share this with you, um, 3 bond 1215 is what you really want to be using on the gasket surfaces, um, that's what they use in the factory, it's not expensive, um, it's good stuff that, I use that whenever I'm putting crankcases together, aluminium to aluminium. Cool, onwards. Well, I'm very happy to report that. Starts and runs lovely. Um, <clears throat> they do have a habit, these engines, of air locking in the radiator, so need to run it up a couple of times, go through a couple of heat cycles, um, radiator caps around on the other side, and keep double checking the coolant level. Um, so I'm gonna I'm not gonna let the customer have it back for a couple of days. I'm gonna run it up a couple of times. He don't think he's in a rush to get it back. I'll run it a couple of times. Um, obviously. You're going to be checking for leaks and things, but I'm pretty confident it's all going to be fine. Make sure the oil and water are right, have a road test, and uh, the job's a good one. Anyway, thanks for watching again, guys, and I will hopefully get more videos out to you soon. Cheers, bye.